six class long time no see i hope you're doing okay there at home i know it's a long time out of school and it's all a bit mad but uh hopefully we'll see you soon so your last video uh that rachel sent you and um, you were looking at making a little book a really cool little book and you um had some ideas about making a game and the instructions for that game into the book so all of your ideas were lovely thank you very much for sending them in they were brilliant and so now what we want to do is scale that up so do you remember we were talking in class that we would make art you know as we run and as we jump um, and we would kind of combine sports and art together so what i want you to do is sort of think of imagine we're back in school and we can go out into the field and we can make a big obstacle course and it's a little bit like maybe total wipeout do you ever watch total wipeout um where we get to run around the field and kind of do silly things but while we're doing those jumping and running in sacks and tumbling and whatever else we're doing we've got art materials or art tools in our hands and we're, we're making art as we run so i'll show you a few examples of what i mean um, maybe think about it like Total Wipeout or think about it like the agility section of Crufts, but you're not collies, you're children. So um, so what basically we would have teams and we would design, you know, this area is where you run and you jump really high and you put a mark as high as you possibly can. Or this area is where you, you know, try and draw something as you're tumbling around, as you're rolling around on the floor or something like that. Um, so depending on how we can work it when we get back into school um, we, we'll just have to see but so for the moment I thought if everybody could come up with just say one idea for it for the obstacle course so you know I'll show you these couple of um, suggestions here that I have like uh, throwing water balloons at uh, a big huge piece of paper I have a circular piece of paper here or um, running while you draw a straight line and I'll show you a little video about that um, and then the last one I have there is kind of like a team relay thing where you have to have your teams switch over a big giant uh, pencil or a big giant um, marker or something and you you run and you make marks and you get points depending on how far you run and how high your mark is so if you just try and think of like um, combining what you love to do in sports whether it's you know hurling type action um, is it Irish dancing is it football basketball or gymnastics and just try and think how could I add in an art material in this so what could we do while we're doing this action um, that makes marks or makes not a recognisable picture but you know just marks like we were making in school um, so yeah so I'll show you a few little things that I did earlier on um, and I hope it makes sense to you um, and I look forward to seeing your work. Okay, bye. So I really want to see uh, drawings of these ideas, okay? Not lists of instructions, but drawings. So to get started, here's some ideas about what we need to be thinking about to come up with our activities. So the first thing to think about is what art tools we're going to use. So these are the objects that are going to carry the medium. So is it a pencil that carries lead? Is it a marker that carries ink? Is it your hand as a tool dipped in paint? Or is it just a plain old paintbrush? It could be a sponge. It could be a stick dipped in paint. It could be a water balloon filled with paint. You could use a rubber to rub out some marks that you've already made. Or you could use pins or nails to pierce the paper. You could get your teammates to use a scissors to cut stuff up or you could use a ball that's soaked in paint and throw that at the paper. Next, ask yourself what medium you want to use. So that's the art substance, the materials like paint or ink or charcoal, oil pastel. You could even use food or maybe water. You could use stickers or sticky vinyl cut into shapes. Or you could do a whole collage thing with cardboard pieces or leaves or magazines. So you're going to have to think about where do your teammates get this stuff? Is it in a bucket beside the canvas or is the scissors tied on with a piece of string? So finally then we think about the actions that we're going to be doing. 
Are we going to be running with these art materials? Are we going to be jumping up high and splashing paint up high? Are we going to be crawling along and trying to draw as we crawl along the ground? Or are we going to do jumping jacks up against a big piece of cardboard and hold the charcoal against the cardboard? Will it be a relay race? Or we could even trace around our whole body shapes. Maybe we're throwing something at the paper. And you can also think about then the rules. How far away is it? Is it timed? All that stuff. So here's just a couple of ideas to get you started. Uh, one idea I had was to fill water balloons with paint and that the teens line up behind their canvas or their piece of cardboard or paper and each team member throws a water balloon splat at the piece of paper and the first team to get all their water balloons onto the canvas is the winner. The second idea is pretty simple. It's just some giant cardboard as a canvas and we have two teams and it's a relay race and you have to pass your giant crayon or marker to your teammates and the team that finishes the quickest with the furthest away marks is the winner. So you could divide the board up into points areas. The highest you can jump or the furthest you can run gets the highest points. So then the last idea that I drew out was running in a line, making a mark on a wall in a straight line as you run. It's kind of like those marks that we made in school where it was heavy on one side and light as you got to the other side. So I tried it out in the studio and then I kept adding different rounds, different processes to that paper. So I'll show you what happened. So here's my oil pastel and imagine I have my whole team behind me and I'm the first to go. So one, two, three, go. So my task is to draw a line from left to right, starting really hard and letting it go really light like we did in class. Then I relay back to my team member and oh, here's team member number two, amazingly in a green top as well. And she does a hard line from right to left and so on and so on, each team member taking a turn to do a line. And you decide the rules then. You decide, is it until there's say 20 marks on the page or is it that each team member has to go three times? You make up the rules until all the page is filled with lovely marks. So then I added a second round and this was the smudge round. So each team member had to run up to the canvas and with their finger, draw a line straight down through all of the other marks that we just made. So you imagine that each team member is running, relaying back, you have to tag your hand. And in this case, your art making tool is your finger and your material or your medium is the oil pastel. So the nice thing about this is that you can layer up loads of different processes on top of the same page over and over again. So for round three, I got some red paint and decided that this was the jumping round. So everyone in the team takes a turn to jump up as high as they can and put a blob of paint onto what you've already done in rounds one and two. You make up the rules. Is it everybody gets two goes or is it that you have to finish in a certain time or have a certain number of dots on your page? Whatever. So for my next round, I got some of my leftover red paint and I mixed it with white and got pink, of course. And I decided I would do circles around each of the red dots. But you'll have to invent an action to go with that. So do you crawl towards the canvas and that's the race? Then for the next round, I watered down some really watery white paint and I decided I would do a kind of uh, egg and spoon race. So I got my spoon with my watery paint. And if you imagine then we have teams who have a bucket of watery paint and they've got to take a scoop and then make it up to the canvas without spilling it and splash it. So pass the spoon back to the teammate, run, splash, run, splash keep that going until everybody's had a go. Now, it kind of made some nice marks, little blobs here and there, but you couldn't really see it. So what I thought was I would mix up my watery white paint 
with some black. And I put it into an old mayonnaise squeezy tube so I could get a proper splash at the canvas. So I got my watery paint, threw it into my uh, old mayonnaise jar there, my old mayonnaise squeezy tin and added some black poster paint and gave it a shake. So it's at this point then you're going to have to decide what action is going to have to happen before you can spray it on the canvas. So what about you have to roll over to the canvas and then go for your spray. So it actually made gorgeous drippy marks and lines and splashes. So it's really turning into a nice piece of art after all these processes. So the final round. For this round, I turned the page sideways and I hung uh, scissors on a piece of twine stuck to my studio wall. And the idea was that each team member, i.e. me on my own, but with my imaginary friends, uh, you have to cut out each of the circles and then grab your circle, run back to your team, and then the next person can come, grab the scissors, and each team member takes a turn at cutting out all of the circles. So we have our lovely circles and um, what do we do with them now? We can add them to another piece of art or we can decide that we like them just as they are and bring them into the gallery where all the technicians will help us hang them maybe in a grid or maybe in a lovely long line sweeping around the gallery. That all depends on what we make. So just to reiterate, um, I don't need you to um, actually make any of these at home or anything. I just want you to maybe draw out any ideas you have. You could have loads of ideas or maybe just one idea. Um, and draw it out in pictures and give it into Miss Fine and, and she can send it on to myself and Rachel. So just to finish up, I thought I would show you a couple of videos of two amazing artists who make art with their bodies and their body shapes. The first guy is called Tony Arico and he's from America and he makes these really uh, geometric patterns uh, by spinning himself around on the floor or using his arms and his legs to make particular patterns on the walls. Here he is making just a pretty basic shape for him because he does very complicated stuff. But this is how he makes this kind of cool spiral circle. And he holds two pieces of compressed charcoal in his hands and he very carefully spins around on these giant painted wooden boards and then those boards get hung up in really famous galleries. He calls these endurance drawings because I think they're actually really hard to do. You have to be really fit and you have to be able to control your body and keep everything really even and perfect. In a lot of ways, um, the artist here is, is doing something very similar to what we were doing in school, you know, making marks. And you can see the heavier marks appear where he has drawn the most. So where he reaches out at the top of his head, it becomes darker and darker and darker because he keeps going over that section. So the sort of defining edges of the, these drawings are basically how tall he can reach up. Um, and when he brings his arms down to his sides each time, he stops his arms in exactly the same position, just below his hips. So he gets this pretty perfect circle on the outside because his arms are both the same length, roughly. And he gets a perfect circle on the inside. can see at the end of this he's pretty tired um, and I think I would be too. The 
These are some of his drawings, which he often does live in the gallery with people sitting there watching him do them. Um, and then the drawings are left on the gallery wall for the period of the exhibition. And sometimes he works along tracks, you know, pulling himself along in a certain motion. And he ends up with these beautiful repeat patterns. So the next artist that I wanted to introduce you to is a woman called Heather Hansen. And she calls her drawings kinetic drawings, which means that it's all about movement and movement of the body. And she discovered that she liked making these drawings by just playing on the beach with her son and making these cool patterns in the sand. And I think she used to be a dancer. Um, so she kind of has this really um, great uh, elegance about her, her body movements and everything. So she gets these huge pieces of charcoal and she does these repeat patterns. Again, like Tony Orico, she kind of extends her body to as, as long as she can and brings her arms and her legs around in these patterns and then smudges all the charcoal to make certain areas darker and heavier marks than others. So you can see here she's kind of swooping her arms into what becomes a perfect circle because her arms are the same length and she keeps repeating the same actions over and over again to get darker marks where she wants and then sometimes she has lighter marks where she's only drawn a little bit. The drawings develop over a good long time. Some drawings take her maybe an hour or so or two hours and again, pretty pretty exhausting stuff. She uh, she does a lot of yoga. She's very fit, and she does these live in big cathedrals and art galleries and open spaces. So when summer comes, you can uh, try out a bit of Heather Hansen's technique there and get down onto the beach and make yourself some beautiful kinetic drawings. see here she's kind of limiting herself to very specific movements to make these kinds of wing shapes and she's just repeating those over and over again so these kinds of drawings um it's probably something you can factor in when you're thinking about um this obstacle course this art obstacle course that we're going to make we could have sheets of giant paper on the floor and um, part of our processes or one of our rounds could be that we try out some of these kinds of actions and if you have the cardboard that we got before we have a big sheet of paper you can try this out on a smaller scale just sit down on your knees with your feet tucked in under you and just see what kind of uh, circles and points you can reach with your arms holding two pencils let's say just give it a go anyway this is her final piece after a couple of hours making this drawing so i hope you enjoy the video and have a bit of fun thinking up some ideas happy making